Psalm 100, <coughs> Psalm 146, the word of God says, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise thee, O Lord. I will praise, I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for all the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He, he relieves the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Amen. May we stand in the presence of our loving God and sing this glorious hymn, 208, Loud Divine, Lord Loves Excelling. <clears throat> Love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down, fixing us that dwelling all thy faithful mercy, <coughs> Jesus. Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, 
For God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the sun and the moon and the stars, the oceans, animal kingdom, plant kingdom, and all that is known and unknown to man, one who changes seasons, one who is sovereign, seated forever and ever, one who decisively defeated, overcame the sting and the power of death. Lord God, we have come, Lord, to worship you, adore you, magnify you, exalt you, and love you deeply. Are it not the reason for our breath in our nostrils? Are it not the reason that we are alive and our names written in the book of life because of what you did on the cross of Calvary? Lord God, you have been our rock, our refuge, our fortress, the horn of our salvation. We lack nothing. You are our portion, our exceedingly great reward. Do we lack anything? Nothing, Lord. You young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing, says thy word. Lord God, you have fed us, clothed us, sheltered us. Lord God, you have provided for us counsel, free of charge, wisdom and knowledge, hindsight and foresight. You have said, Lord, this is the way we walk in it when we were hesitant. Lord, we thank thee. Thank thee, Lord. We have the all our heart we have come to worship you. How could we come into your holy presence unless you forgive our sins, our repeat sins, our habitual sins, cultural sins, our sins of commission and sins of omission? Lord, I pray that will forgive all of us, beginning with me, so that, Lord, we are washed in the blood of Christ, wearing the robe of righteousness and wearing the garment of salvation only Jesus Christ could give because of what he did on the cross. He paid the price. Lord God, we don't have to earn this salvation. It is given us a gift. And we thank the Lord, you are always there to love us. Lord, we thank thee, we could rejoice in you because of your Emmanuel's presence here. You have said, Lord, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there are mine, their midst. You are here, Lord. You are here. Right now, you are here, Lord. We thank thee for the Holy Spirit of God that's going to open our ears and eyes and hearts. So the Lord will have understanding of the deep truth of the word of God. We'll have discernment of your will and way. Oh God, we'll, we'll be determined more than ever before. To, oh God, to love you and to follow you no matter what. Lord, we pray all the singing, all the worship, will be accepted and received in heaven. We pray for our president, vice president, congressmen, senators, governors, and all those who govern us, we pray for police people who keep law and order. First responders, we pray for our own personal people. We pray the safety of this country. We pray for the goodness, prosperity of this country. We pray for world leaders. And we pray for especially persecuted Christians. Lord, we pray for those who are, oh God, without job, suffering, marginalized, homeless, widows and widowers and orphans those in homes for the aging, those who have nobody to look at their face today. God, give us, oh God, always a mission of compassion so that we'll be ambassadors for Christ. We thank the Lord God for yesterday's blessings of our beloved Uttam and Divya's reception. What a, what a proof of a holy matrimony made in heaven but enacted on this earth. We thank the Lord for the blessings on this couple. Thy precious children. We thank thee for each and every one of us here, Lord. We have come to, oh God, fall at thy feet, present ourselves, and have an encounter with you. So the word of God will be internalized by me and all of us. We'll be strong people because the word of God has gone inside. Lord God, we pray thou will continue to give us that incredible blessing of worshiping you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. What a glorious Sunday, first Sunday of February. We are finished with the January, folks. We are into February, 11 months. That's all left, even 11 months. If we minus out one week, that's it. We are racing. But the Lord is not in a hurry. He is here to receive our praise and worship. And we thank you because you have come in love of Jesus. It's a glorious morning that God has given to us. May we all stand and join our blessed praise team as a leaders.
into this wonderful time of worship. May the Lord bless you. May we stand, please. Are you all happy this morning? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made. Are you all happy that God has added another day in our life, right? It's only from the time when we get up to the, uh, from, to the time we go to bed. And if we wake up the next morning, it is his blessing. He adds another day in our life. And this is another day that God has added in our life to, so that we could live for him, to worship him, and to glorify his name. So we are going to sing these three songs which we all know and from our childhood. This is the day I will enter his gates and we bring sacrifice of praise. Which means you don't have to rely much on the lyrics here. But you can clap and sing and give glory to God. I want everyone here to clap and sing and rejoice and give thanks to God. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Coming into his presence with thanksgiving. Opening up our hearts to say thank you Jesus. Amen. Are you ready? Clap your hands. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will be joy, we will be joy, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be joy, and be glad in it. Warming up here. <laughs> Turn to the person next to you and say, God's presence is here. Amen. If you believe that, give him the glory that is due to his name. Everyone clapping your hands and singing and glorifying the Lord. Clap your hands. You can do much better. This is the day. This is the day.
offering to the Lord this morning. He deserves all the glory, honor and praise. Amen. I know we are all catching our breath. <laughs> Three songs at a trot, all fast songs. Yes, it's good to give thanks to God. And we offer unto him a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Amen. And we offer unto you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer unto you the sacrifices of joy and we offer unto you and we offer unto you the sacrifices of thanksgiving and we offer unto you the sacrifices of joy. We're offering our best to God this morning. Hallelujah. The best that we could offer is our lives as a sacrifice. And we come before His presence and say, Lord, I offer myself. I come before your presence with a heart full of thanksgiving. For all what you've done for me, all what you're going doing in my life, and all what you've planned to do in my life. And the promises of Jeremiah 29 11 is a promise for you and for me. He's got a plan for your life and my life. And let's thank Him. Let's take a moment to thank God for the mountains, for the valleys, for the blessings that have come our way, for every breath that we are breathing. It's because of Him. Hallelujah. Worship is not about just singing songs, but offering a sacrifice of praise through your words, in your own simple words, telling God, speaking to Him like a friend, speaking to Him like a dad, telling Him whatever you want to tell. Take this moment and say, it's a special time between you and God. Just speak to him and say, tell him you love him. Tell him you thank him. Whatever you want. Let's take this moment and praise him. Praise you, Jesus. I give you all the glory, honor, and praise of the Lord. You deserve. You deserve all the glory. Mm -hmm. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. So forget about yourself. So forget about yourself and concentrate on Him and worship Him. The best. So forget about yourself and concentrate So all the glory, Lord. 
You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And in love, it's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. to go deeper to know more we know him as a father but do we know the father's heart unless we spend time with him unless we go deeper we cannot know what the father wants from us what he wants to speak to us and here he is waiting and i find many times i sit and wait and sanjay comes back but he goes he's busy with his cricket and so many things but i just long to speak to him but i know all our kids are busy how much more god is waiting as a father to speak to you and to listen to you even today he is calling us to go deeper deeper still to know him because he's a god who formed our heart who knew us before before time began he's our maker jesus draw me nearer 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 blessed lord to the cross bear
being a good, good father. Thank you, Lord, for being a good, 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 good father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. We worship you. We give you thanks. Thank you for being our firm foundation, the rock on which we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Thank you, Jesus, that you pointed your finger at me and called me by name. Thank you, Jesus. You first loved me. Thank you, Jesus, for the John 3.16. Because you loved me so much that you died for me that I might have life today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the hope I have in you. When everything is lost, I still know that you are holding my hand. I don't need to fear about anything. I don't need to fear about man, his words. Hallelujah. You are there. You are my foundation. Hallelujah. You've been faithful. Faithful. Faithfulness is all I see in you, Lord. Jesus. How can I thank you enough? I don't have enough words. 
faithful. 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 Hallelujah. You have not let us down in the past. We know it. Why would you fail us now? You are faithful. Hallelujah. Thank him for his faithfulness. His word keeps coming faithful, 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 faithful. Hallelujah. That's all I see. What did I do that he should be faithful to me? That he should love me? I fail to understand this. Hallelujah. Faithful God. Faithful. Faithful. Oh, thank you, Master. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand, when everything around me is shaken. I've never been forgotten, I put my faith in Jesus, he's never generations so why would he fail now he won't I've still got joy
just thank the Lord just before we close this time of worship. Just thank Him because He is a firm foundation. Whatever happens in our life, He is in control of our life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whatever can happen, He will never, ever let us down. Can we thank Him for a moment before we close this time? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that you gave us this morning, that we could sing your praises. Not only that, be assured that you are our firm foundation, that you are our Father, that you are an all in all, that you planned our life even before time began. Nothing is by accident. We believe in your divine providence, O Lord. Even today, I pray that you will speak to us through your servant. I pray for the rest of the service. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Before Uttam sets up, I would just give a brief introduction to the song that we're going to sing now. It's a Thanksgiving song. Many of you know the song. Please uh, join us. It, it, is, it says, I will praise and uh, sing and praise with thanksgiving. My Jesus to you, my Lord, for your favors towards me are countless. A million thanks and praise to you, my Lord. Uh, you have given me much more than I deserved. Uh, but your and your great mercies towards me. I have received much more than I, I could ask for. I couldn't be thankful enough, Lord. Um, so, uh, please join us as we sing. Um, yeah, once again, thank you, church. Yeah, please uh, join with us as we sing the song.
ಕೋಟಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಸ್ತುತಿ ಧನ್ಯವಾ ಕೋಟಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಸ್ತುತಿ going to sing this melodious uh, song in telugu uh, the brief meaning of the song is uh, like how you and me will express our joy uh, in praising the lord uh, the meaning of the song is uh, the meaning of the song is also in the slides uh, so uh, today uh, along with our uh, enthusiastic participants um, uh, singers we also have albert uncle and grace aunty uh, whom we depend most uh, mostly for the tune and uh, for everything actually and we also have uh, henry today in uh, guitar please welcome him and also we welcome <laughs> and we also welcome our dear uh, uttam thank you <laughs> let this song give glory to god alone amen amen
We thank and praise God for this rare opportunity to stand behind the pulpit <clears throat> and to glorify his name for the wonderful opportunity we have through various means, through worship, through scripture lesson, reading, the songs of all age groups, because the Lord is the one who is the reason behind it all. We thank and praise God uh, for the wonderful, blessed way we could come together in unity, in love, and uh, do every bit of thing in-house under the leadership of our beloved Sangeeta. Wonderful decoration started on Wednesday, and we could do it. We, we did it in joy of the Lord. The, the view is very special to us, and uh, everyone is special to us, and we thank God that uh, all... We thank and praise God that the Lord has led this wonderful lady to a blessed man of God. And you can see the fellow is able to play keyboard, guitar. What a blessing, what a blessing, you know. And who can find a virtuous woman, says the word of God, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, who can find a virtuous woman? I mean, her price is far above rubies. Proverbs 31 says that, you know. Much can happen with the man when a woman of God is with him standing all the way, isn't it? And even if the man is not believer, the woman of God has a way of lifting him up. As a matter of fact, the word of God says the woman of God sanctifies that unbeliever because of her life of devotion to the Lord. The word of God says that. The man gets bonus blessings because of his believing wife. You know, it's amazing. The mystery, the miracle of God's blessings. We thank especially our little ambassadors for Christ who are able to practice with their talents and sing together. And we thank God for Evelyn who channels them so well. It's not easy practicing with these boys, but they, all, they love the Lord. Their parents have taught them to love the Lord. And we value every child in our church. And uh, they are able to sing to the glory of God. Here are the four points that we started way early in the, in the month of January, actually as a watch net service, and the, the Lord somehow keeps us going. Here it is, that I may know Christ. That's the title, we stick with it. That I may know Christ. We saw that very clearly. Do you know Christ? Knowing Christ has to do with the, having a personal knowledge of him. I know this is the Lord's guidance. This is the Lord's doing. And it will end up as marvelous in our eyes, isn't it? That's the way. A personal knowledge of Christ. Not a superficial knowledge. Not a knowledge obtained from mommy, daddy, grandmother, grandfather. No, I know this Christ. I have a personal relationship. I have an experiential knowledge of this Christ. We welcome back our Sarah. Just now I see Sarah. Welcome, Sarah. Hope Anij and Mummy and all are well. Welcome back. God bless. And so, that I may know Christ. Paul was able to say that because he was earning to know Christ. He was never done with Christ. You know, you know have you seen some children say, oh, I know Mummy, I know my daddy. Not really. You know very little about your Mummy, daddy. You know, you, you seem to think that you know. Not really. You know, have you ever say, enjoyed your mom and dad, how deep they are? Have you sat down to see how deep they are? How reflective they are? How concerned they are? How prayerful they are? How sacrificial they are? That's why the word of God says, honor your father and mother. Very important. So it's wonderful to know God, Christ who died for us. And Paul says that I may know him. It is an ongoing relationship, intimate relationship through which we get to know Christ. And then we went on to see the second point, the power of his resurrection. There's a power that is given, dunamis, given to us after the risen Christ. That's the risen Christ said in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power, not an ordinary power. The power I have just now overcome, death and grave, everything. I'll give you that power. You shall receive, again, a gift you don't need to buy for it, earn for it. It's not a reservation for Pentecostals. Every child of God who receives Christ through faith has given that power. 
you know, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you at the time you receive the Lord, you receive the Holy Spirit, and then you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. You can't be a witness unless you've got power in you, you know. You've got to be authentic. You've got to be strong, you know, because the enemy is trying to push you down. God says, I'll give you power to overcome. And then the word of God says in Timothy, what? God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power. God has given you again, given, given, received, and given, given, what? Power of sound mind, of love, God has given us. That's the kind of God we have, you know. And people saw God's, uh, uh, Christ's disciples incredibly moving with power. When you move along power, your words are powerful, your deeds are authentic, believable, and people will love you. And third point, we saw that the fellowship of his suffering, we just began. It's a big, huge topic because it has to do with the depth of knowing Christ. Paul wanted to know Christ through a fellowship, a koinonia of suffering. A lot of people, they want a relationship with Christ minus suffering, but not so in Christianity. Christianity always talks about a life that has got a depth to it, nothing superficial. You want a real deep relationship with Christ, you cannot minus out suffering. Suffering could come in many, many ways to God's children through many, many situations and circumstances. It could be a mental suffering, it could be emotional suffering, psychological suffering, physical suffering, and even having very little, you know. But I've noticed in India and Africa, I've noticed the poor people have no, you know, who go through enormous suffering, they have a beautiful way of glorifying Christ, loving Christ deeply, you know. And they are not dressed that enough well or this and that. But you know what? The love of Christ is all over them. I'm sure you have that. I'm not minusing you out in any way, sure. You know, those who suffer have a greater love for Christ because there is an identification that happens with them. That's why in Isaiah 53 we saw that. You know, it's important to understand the word uh, koinonias. And before that, the word uh, suffering, you know, because many, many God's children, multitude of God's children, let me put it that way, they go through suffering on account of being good, uh, being godly, being persons who love the Lord. Why would I, Lord, Lord suffer like this, people ask. You know, why, why, Lord? But God seems to answer always in silence or in secondly to some children who can take this answer, why not you? You know, because God wants a deeper relationship with, the, with you, with me, and he puts us through some suffering, not because he enjoys it, but puts us through the reality of being a Christian. The reality of being a Christian is always inclusive of suffering. There is nothing like exclusive. I want to minus out. I'm seeking Christ so that I don't want this suffering. Never, never. That will never be the case. So this is what the Lord wants us to understand very clearly, that is, he wants us to fellowship with him on various front. And one of the fellowship that he desires is through suffering. The suffering word comes from that pathema, Greek word pathema, simply from where you get passion, where you get uh, uh, pathos, where you get sympathy, all those things. And it has to do with, uh, you know, suffering, you know. And Christ suffered as our dear uh, uh, Frederick read for us, you know. Christ suffered, despised, rejected, away with him, crucified him. We don't want him. We want Barabbas. We don't want him. For what? For what lady has done good? That's a world you live in and we better understand very clearly. The just man suffered for the evil world. And you know what? When Frederick was reading, uh, you saw that when, while he was reading, verse 10 of Isaiah of, uh, chapter 53, let's turn to Isaiah 53. There you can see, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Can you believe? God Almighty was pleased to bruise our Lord Jesus Christ. And it pleased the Lord to put him to grief. Do you want a definition of suffering? Go to that Isaiah 53. You see? And it, and it also, why? 
Because when you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. You know? And so, it, God allowed his son to go through loneliness. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? You know, that forsakenness is not easy to go through. It pleased the Lord to put his son to go through enormous suffering. You know, are you living in a world that you don't want any suffering? Especially, all of us need to take time, take deep breath and say, how is my relationship? The moment suffering comes, do I run away from Christ? Or I run towards Christ and say, Lord, I do understand how much you must have felt forsaken. I do understand, Lord, how much of you felt despised, you know? And uh, so the word of God, Koinani has to do with many things. Uh, as I said last week, it could be a business venture partnership, uh, commercial joint partnership. It could also mean a fellowship participation in sharing and in communion. And it, thirdly, it could also, Koinani is, uh, uh, is uh, mysteriously related to suffering, you know? There's, there's, that the deeper meaning is koinani has to do with the, the reality of the Christian life that uh, exhibits itself in suffering. There's fellowship, there's a deep communion that happens to people, suffering in silence. Do you know there are a lot of people suffering in this world? There are a lot of people suffering. You may think, oh, what, what kind of suffering? Go, read the news. You will see what kind of people are going through suffering. You live in Ukraine, you constantly bomb. And you, are, you never know when the bomb will fall on your head, isn't it? You go through sufferings in some parts where there's no rain, you know. And then when you read the earlier part of Isaiah 53, it was like a, in a root out of dry ground, like a tender plant that despised, you know. Previously, we lived in a home, 118 Waterfall Court. We had the, this uh, Japanese maple and it's still there. And then it dropped some seeds, and one of the seeds sprouted. And I didn't notice it, but it sprouted. And it came. And then Rick Beaven used to cut my, I know his name, and he used to cut my grass. And as this thing came, he will come and he will just move it over, that little thing. Always I said, when it grows a little big enough, I'll take it out and then plant it separately. I had a dear affection for that little plant. So I'll say, but then I'll forget. Then it'll come up again. He'll shave it off, it'll come again. He'll shave it off, it'll come again. And I said, now I got to do some rescue on this one. So my wife knows that. So I just took it out, uh, saved it from his constant cutting. <laughs> It survived so many months. He kept on, you know, moving on it. He kept on surviving. I said, this fella is going to keep going. So I just dug him out, put him in a potter, and then, if you want to see that plant, that little Japanese tree, come and see it at my home. It's behind. Big fellow now. It's grown up. I brought it to my new home, and I said, right behind my living room, this fellow will be there. And it's still there, strong, and it survived all kinds of weather <laughs> and everything. And it shot up, and it's still alive. It's amazing, isn't it? And those who have gone through suffering have got a way of making it in life. Have you noticed that? Have you observed some lives? Those who have gone through suffering have a greater appreciation for suffering, our life. And those who have gone through suffering have a better perspective in life. Have you noticed that? They, they, they do have a, a calm nature. They do have patience with people. They do uh, take it well. They do, their, their, their anxiety temperature is less because they've gone through that. Their endurance level is very good. You know, it's amazing how God can train his children through the school of suffering. That's what I meant, school of suffering. You know, it's amazing when we go to Jesus, he'll put you through his training process and it'll be through the school of suffering, you know. You hold something common with Jesus, and uh, you share his sufferings, the idea of not being surprised, but, you know, 
it becomes accepting trials as a normal, to be expected, part of life, you know, Christian life, you know. It's very, very important that you, you and I understand this uh, truth, this uh, third point. It is critical to our uh, life in Christ, critical to not to overreact when suffering comes knocking on our door, isn't it? And uh, so what? It's part of life, you know. And uh, suddenly some things come and you are not well and the things completely take a change. Everything seems to be going in the wrong direction, but Christ is always in the right direction. You may think it's, uh, my life is going the right, wrong direction. I lost my job. I don't know what's going on with me. Relax. God is in control. God knows what he is putting through and he is putting through the school of adversity so that you will handle prosperity. Isn't it? Those who have gone through schools of adversity, they understand when times of prosperity comes, they'll be very level-headed. You know, God will use their money, their energy, their talent to glorify his name all across the globe. You know, when, and then the word of God says very clearly, some people, you know, they think, oh, why would suffering should come to this person, that person, or such a good person? Why not? God chooses to make them stronger, and God chooses to make the witness believable, credible, trustworthy, authentic. So he puts them through some enormous testing, and so was Paul's life, so was Job's life, so was the life of so many saints of God. They went through suffering, and even now millions of saints of God across the globe are going through enormous suffering, and they suffer for not doing anything bad, and for not doing anything very, very evil or anything. No. They are suffering because they are doing good to the nation, to the country, to the people, to the environment. You know, people don't like it. I remember uh, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, uh, John the Divine, uh, John the Apostle John begins with what? Fellow brother in tribulation, he says. This. He says he was, you know what? You better know that suffering is part of life. You know that Psalm 22, Jesus recited, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So people don't feel forsaken. Jesus said, I'll never leave you, not forsake you. So don't bring that into the equation and then try to give room for the devil to feel, oh, you're, nobody loves you. God loves you. God will never forsake you. You are taken to hospital here or anywhere, God is with you. He knows he's in control. He's teaching you some lessons, sometimes lessons of rebukes. For me, like I didn't go to doctor and just neglected. Oh, so I don't know this. You know, uh, cardiologist kept calling, sending cards and, and all messages. I said, oh, leave me alone. I'm okay. And then all those things. And doctor, even my personal doctor said, we didn't have for more than a year or so physical nothing for you. What's going on with you? Oh, I'll be back. I'm a little bit busy. I'll be back. So God has said, now I'm going to chastise you, rebuke you. Now you're going through everything. So all of a sudden, I just went through this and that test, and I come back from India. Then I have to go for colonoscopy. Doctor said, 10 years gone, I want you colonoscopy. Everybody is demanding tests from me. All right, I said, okay, I'll submit myself <laughs> to all these things. Sometimes God has to rebuke his servant or you and I, and say, now, now is the time to take you to hospital and correct you. But that's not suffering, please. That's negligence on my side. Don't follow me, please. It's a very wrong way to stand here and then even say about it, nothing to boast about it. It's, it's not right, you know. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and you and I have a responsibility to take care of it. Anyway, suffering is a wonderful uh, but deep theme the suffering servant, you know, sufferings and trials uh, are our pathway to glory. And uh, there's no, there's, there's this incredible uh, Christ, the glorious Christ, going through a suffering servant of God. Ebed Yahweh is a, a Hebrew word that says servant of God thrown here and there, beaten up so badly. You know, when you read Isaiah 53, that's why I requested Please read Isaiah 53 three times. 
before we really go into this topic of wanting to know what suffering is. Imagine all that he has gone through. He was totally, nobody bothered to even look at him. You know, everybody said, away with him, away with him. You know, for what? All he did good, you know. And nobody will, nobody will believe his report. He grew up before him as a tender before God, as a tender plant and his root out of dry ground. Whoever would look at a tender plant and root out of dry ground, you know. He has no form or comeliness when we see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. Look at it, how God chose to appear. Totally unattractive, God appeared. We have lots of artists drawing incredible pictures of Christ. But Isaiah 53 says, it's looking very ordinary. God's glory was hidden completely in an ordinary way. Extraordinary God like this. Sometimes you wonder how you can measure up to that kind of appearance. You know, you read, go and read uh, Philippians chapter 2, and he came down from heaven and took upon the form, what? A servant, a slave, a slave. That's what he took upon himself. He chose that part. How, 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 how can I ever feel bossy? How can I ever feel I'm in control? No, no way. When we read it, we say, Lord, give me that spirit. Give me that spirit, you know. And there is no beauty that we should desire him. Now, take, can you take it? Verse 3, he's despised. Look at the suffering he went through. He's despised. Oh, can't look at him. Away with him. Rejected by men. By men, sinful men. Sinful men despised him. Sinful men rejected him. Anybody here who can test your life against this? Measure your life against this? Anybody here looking for, to, I want to be seen? I want to be noticed? Please test yourself. A man of sorrows, you know, acquainted with grief, you know, all because he took my sins, George Jesse Dawson's sins. He took your sins. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, you know, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. People ran away from him. They didn't want to be near him, you know, and they didn't like even to look at his face, you know. This uh, verse 4 and 4 through 6 is very, very important, you know. The, because it presents 4, 5, and 6 presents the heart of gospel, you know. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Our griefs that we would have had without Christ and our sorrows without Christ he took on himself. Yet we esteemed him stricken. Oh, he must have done something. So he is getting struck, you know, smitten by God. God is, be, God is smiting him because he has sinned something and afflicted by God Almighty. And then look at it, four and five and six is gospel presentation, okay? Then look at five. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Look at it, wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Can you take it in? Your iniquities, my iniquities, my transgression, your transgressions made him to be bruised and wounded. Inwardly, not talking about physical, inwardly, man of sorrows, man of grief, you know, maturity, love, that's what it is. And then if you read First John chapter 3, verse 16, he proved his love, what? By laying down his life on the cross. First John chapter 3, verse 16, isn't it? And bruise for our iniquities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. We are healed spiritually inwardly. Yes, it has got physical meaning, but inward meaning is spiritual. By his stripes, I'm healed. I could think straight. I could I could do God's plan and God's will. I have a mind, a spiritual mind now. You remember? We have the mind of Christ. Have this mind. Let this mind be in Christ, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians, he says that. You remember? That's what it's talking about. A spiritual mind, a spiritual motivation, a spiritual demeanor, a spiritual perspective. What am I here for? Who am I? 
I'm, I'm Johanna, I'm David Gade. Why am I here? What's God's plan for me? You know? And then you begin to think about it. Then you, the Holy Spirit begins to work on it. And once you have received Christ, you, God begins to use you mightily. And you will, you will consider your life as totally given to him. You know? And go, surrender to him. And then verse 6, again, 4, 5, and 6 presents gospel. Okay? All we like sheep have gone astray. Remember? Very clearly say, all have sinned and come shake the glory of God. Romans 6, 23, isn't it? For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Again, you read it, Romans, isn't it? All we like sheep have gone astray, and each of us have turned away, everyone on his own way. Is applicable to you and I. Every time our thought goes away from God's plan, we are saw from God's plan. I want to do this. I want to go here. I want to have this. Remember, I was condemning that carnal, I, you know, my thoughts, my ways, my feelings, you know, all those things. You know, people become victims of those. And then they get frustrated in life, you know. Very, very important to understand. That's why God's parents, godly parents will say, don't say, Lord, let thy will be done. Let thy will be done. Godly parents will put that seed in them. And, you know, the temper-throwing children need to be corrected very quickly. Listen, stop, okay? Stop this. And then need to be told very clearly that God loves you and don't all, all do the, all these things. Some children, are, they, are, they, they want attention all the time. We need to tell them there are children with no attention, but they still love the Lord Jesus. Amazing, isn't it? So we need to be very careful to understand the Lord has laid, everyone has turned his own way, and the Lord God has laid on Christ Jesus the iniquities of me and you, of us all. What a suffering. What a suffering for you by our Lord Jesus two, a little over 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary to make it all possible for you and I. If you want to be a disciple of Christ, you have to understand Isaiah 53. Otherwise, you will never be able to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. The fellowship of his suffering, Paul knew through, I'm on page 20, Paul knew through his loving relationship with Christ that it was a privilege to suffer for Christ. He considered it a privilege to suffer for Christ. You know, it's amazing. He says that very clearly in Philippians chapter 1, verse 29 and 30, for to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. So God has given you a privilege, a blessing to suffer for his name. You might think, Pastor, because of uh, my beliefs in Christ, I'm going through some tough times in my corporate world. Take it easy. The word of God makes it an me clear. It's a proof. God approves your life. You know. You know, someone says, you know, if you can't turn the heat, get away from the kitchen. <laughs> you know. You have to know that if you want to follow Christ, there's going to be suffering, isn't it? That's part of the game. You will be misunderstood. You'll be mistreated. You'll be paid under. But God says, listen, bring that money to me. I'll multiply it. Isn't it? The fellow with the wicked will pay a lot of money for something. You'll be prosperous and you'll do very well in the sight of God. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, which is the beginning step, but also to suffer for his sake, which is the deeper step. A lot of Christians who don't read scriptures very carefully. They just say, oh, do you believe in Christ? I believe in Christ. Do you believe in suffering for Christ? They'll back out. Because they have carved out a world, a carved out a world minus suffering. That's not the case we read in the Bible. You know, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here also that's happening in me. It's amazing how God's word makes it enormously clear that suffering is part and parcel of Christian life. God chose and then revealed to Paul the many things he must suffer for Christ's sake. God gave, gave him very clear. Remember he told him at the beginning itself to the gentleman Ananias who baptized him. He said, he's a chosen vessel. Chosen for what? Straight away God told him, revealed to him, he's going to suffer for me. He's going to suffer a lot for me. Oh, how my vision of God is. 
And vision of God is so immature, you know. Sometimes I ask God, why? Why, Lord, what's, what is this? What is this? I ask so many things about God, you know, about my life. In the few years I have been on this earth, you know, I ask God, Lord, help me to live for you. God chose and then revealed to Paul the many things he must, it's a must, remember this, please. He must suffer for Christ's sake, Acts 9, 16. For I will show him, look at it, many things he must suffer for my name's sake. What a Christianity we have to do. We don't want suffering. But God says, if you want to follow me, imagine suffering. Comfort loving Christians. Nothing wrong. God gives you a blessed life, a comfortable bed, good food to eat, many, many things. Nothing. God is not against it. But that's not it, life. Look, 2 Corinthians 11, 23, 25. Are they ministers of Christ? Paul is telling. I speak as a fool. I am more. You know, you know, where is the pride of pastors? Some pastors think no end of themselves, evangelists and others. They have to be very, very careful, you know. He calls himself, I'm a fool for Christ, you know. Whose fool are you? Remember that uh, one fellow in California, famous author, is, he had a black, blackboard in the university and said, I'm a fool for Christ. Whose fool are you? Put a big, and he was standing in front of that big university. And people were looking at him. And then he, they got the message, you know. Who is the voice? The word of God says. Nobody is wise. Only God is wise. You know, imagine. I am a fool. I speak as a fool. Imagine highly educated Paul is telling. I'm more in labors more abundant. I have worked very hard. You know, when, when we work very hard and we fall dead, you know, it's a great joy. The body is worked hard, mind has cooperated, mind, mind led, and the body cooperated, and your spirit is strong in you, and you, you fall dead after working hard. It's great. But you live in comfort and always telling, oh, I can't allow this mosquito to bite me. Life, you know, tiny bit even, I can't have it. Very different life. You can have it. But the God says you choose. You want to choose the path of Jesus Christ? Take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me daily. That's a path. Jesus said that, isn't it? I'm not making it up. That's the truth, isn't it? And some people cannot take it, you know. More abundantly I've worked hard. In stripes above meshes, beaten up. You know, how often he was beaten up. And look at it, in prisons more frequently. Go into the slammer and Paul is out. Go into the slammer and kicked, you know, beaten up into the slammer. And he comes out and the poor brothers receive him. And then he comes, you know, when you go into those days, slammer, they beat you up so bad, you know. And it's, you know, the slammers that you go in countries like uh, uh, Iran and, and uh, countries like North Korea or China, all these places, they beat you up so bad, you know, and your body is not, you know. I was reading about uh, a politician was tricked, to get going, tricked into going back to Iran, and the man was beaten so bad, so bad, black and blue. And the man even couldn't think properly. He was giving some kind of a few interviews here and there to BBC. Just terrible, you know. Thank God we live in America. It's a blessed country. Don't ever join with people who are cursing this country. It's a blessed country, you know. Don't ever, ever join that group that are uh, bad-mouthing this country. It's a very blessed country. Isn't it? Do you agree with me? It's a very blessed country, you know. It's not right to join with people who just constantly downplay this country because the power of tongue is very, very strong. And you, you have to be very careful how you use your tongue. It should be to bless people. And he says, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often, almost I felt I'll be, I'm going to die, the kind of beating. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes. That is, 39 times he was beaten. 39 stripes, five times they gave him. 39. Because the law allows not 40. So up to 39. Five times. Not easy. Not easy. You know, not at all easy. The stripes are so bad that people beat. You know, it's happening in some parts of India now. People are taking some, this thing, and even police are into this, some parts of North India. 
they are taking it into because they are discriminating some of these people from low caste and they are doing it. You know, you have to pray a lot for our beloved mother country. You know, you have to pray a lot that the doors be open and people enjoy equal rights and freedom, isn't it? There's a lot going on in India. Mistreatment of women and children, so much going on. Especially the, the, the depressed class people are treated so bad, you know. Forget about Christians, just even non-Christians, depressed class, for nothing at all. They are beaten up so badly, you know. I'm going there, I'll hear a full of stories from various corners. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with the rods. Imagine, your body gets beaten up so bad. <laughs> Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. He goes on to mention so many things he could have said. But he is saying in the Holy Spirit so that you and I can take it well when God allows suffering to come our way. That's all, you know. Very clearly, he says, uh, often, you know, and he says that uh, later on, you know, in journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among the false brethren, in weariness, in toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside the other things, what comes upon me daily? My deep concern for all the churches. That's what he, he had concern for all the churches that God allowed him to build. He never bothered this as a big deal. He looked beyond that about God's agenda for his life. What is in this? Yeah. Because God said he must suffer for me. The man went through it clearly. He didn't run away and say, I had enough of this. I'm going to take time off. You know, many, 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 many people, they, do, they said they had enough of this. They want to move on in the wrong direction. <coughs> Paul suffered for the cause of the gospel of Christ and also for the well-being and his deep concern for all the churches. He suffered because he wanted all the churches to be well and, uh, and do well uh, as a church. You know, this church should do well. That's, that's my commitment and God is helping me. I'm not a great committing person. I'm not a great dedicated person. I'm in no way exemplary in the consecration dedicated, no. But I just ask God to help me. God help me to be committed to this uh, flock of yours, these children of yours, so that I prepare well the message and uh, so that I do well in your sight. I'm not great, but God helps me. That's all I can say. Paul suffered for the cause of the gospel. The entire Isaiah 53 prophetic chapter portrays for you and I the horrendous graphic sufferings of the Ebediabe, the suffering servant of God. You know, he suffered a lot. Imagine. That's what we are going to remember very soon now. As the saying goes, no cross, no crown, no pain, no gain. You know, children especially need to be taught that, you know. Some of our children, they want easy time. Easy time. There is nothing like easy time, please. You know, and you know, I worked with Masons uh, at the back recently. Now they're going to be working this coming week on this up front. And the Masons work so hard and so meticulous. You know, they don't want any mistake or anything. You know, the work is, I sometimes used to think, uh, what a great guy these are. They're not highly educated, but they're highly talented. You know? <coughs> but when I talk to Seraphim, the chief Mason, he'll always say, Pastor, there is no alternative to working hard. Till the last minute, he'll do all his best, you know. And then he'll wait for me to come out and then look at it and say, okay, it's okay, today is all right. Then they'll go off, you know. Is it okay, Pastor? Then, okay, all right, you can go, you know. Uh, it's stunning how we need to live a life in approved of God, not in a live of comfort, our own world. Who is influencing you? Very important. If that person influencing you talks less uh, life, minor suffering, beware of that person. You know, I'm not talking physical suffering. This, you know, you go through testifying Christ to people. You go through living for Christ, speaking truth of the gospel of Christ. You know, then you go through incredible tough times. 
you know, there is no cross, then you can be rest assured there is no crowd. You know, Paul had been a persecutor of Christians at one time, but then after his conversion, he learned what it means to be persecuted. But he considered it as a privilege, a blessing, an honor to suffer for the cause of Christ. As we seek to grow in our precious relationship with Christ and experience his resurrection power within us, we should expect the attack of the enemy will come in various ways. Discouragement, you know, volley of uh, disappointments and uh, all kinds of things will come. John 16, 33, our Lord said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, you know, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In other words, as we seek to grow in our precious relationship with Christ, we should expect the world to also reject us. Your own relatives may not like you. And that's why Matthew 5, 10 says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Remember, this world is not a very good friend of God, nor to God's people. The prince of this world is the devil, isn't it? Being and living a life of a dedicated Christian will mean facing and enduring suffering for the sake of Christ, isn't it? We are called and equipped to be like Christ, and the world will hate, will always our Lord Jesus Christ. We, the believers, are different from the world and its values and attitude, the world attitude, the values, outlook. We are not part of the game. We are away from that. So many coaches who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are laid off because they prayed in the, on the field, isn't it? So many persecutions. You know, this teacher was doing this and silent prayer, immediately the school board, get rid of the teacher, you know. Bible study happening at the lunchtime, get rid of that teacher, this coach, that coach, you know. Look at it. Imagine if you are the person, a breadwinner, you know. I'm talking about what's happening in this country, you know. It's not easy, you know. Here, in, even in the corporate world, don't talk about your beliefs, you know. But they can talk about bringing other things into their corporate company. Oh, today is this, this celebration of this people, that people you can bring, and then people laugh and laugh. It's nothing wrong. But the moment you talk about Christ and Christmas or, or Easter, there you go. The devil gets mad, upset with you, you know. Remember, the world will never like you for being a Christian. If you're loved by the world, there is something wrong about you. My Christianity, definitely. If you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God, says what Apostle Paul says, Apostle John says this very clearly in the epistles. If you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. And John chapter 15, you know, verse 18, 19, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. These are words of Jesus. Yet because you are not of the world, but you are in the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Be careful getting to be loved by the world, you know. There are some people who are probably wanting to be getting a nod from this world. Be careful, you know. The world is at war with God and all is love and his goodness. God, the world cannot take our Lord Jesus and his goodness and his love. The world praises pride and not humility. The world endorses sin in all its manifestations. And you, the world wants you to applaud or even tolerate it or don't speak against it, you know. But we are Christians, you know. Believers are equipped to endure sufferings through misunderstandings and mistreatment. We are well equipped inside. The Holy Spirit is inside. We can go through it. Joseph of Egypt went through enormous amount of such uh, mistreatment, misunderstanding, all those things. Job endured incredible agonizing sufferings, which we saw earlier in the message. King David suffered even from his own son Absalom, who wanted to kill him. Isn't it? Remember? Absalom said, let's get rid of the old man. He planned it. Very really he planned it to murder his father. The poor old man had to run pillar to post to save his life. Let us not seek out 
or carve out a Christian life that's without suffering. Don't do that. Don't seek like that. Oh, I don't want, I can't take it. Pastor, I'm not equipped. No, you are well equipped if you're a Christian. Suffering for Christ will lead you to spiritual life of maturity. Carefully watch this. Suffering for, for Christ will lead you to a life of what? Maturity, insight, faithfulness, and fruitfulness. Important four points I've given you. Suffering for Christ. You'll become a very spiritually matured person. You'll be an insightful person. Maybe the Lord is making you to wait for this purpose. You know, you'll be a per faithful person. Suffering will say, well, I'll follow him anyway. As I told you earlier, a lot of poor people that I'll meet in India, they come with tremendous suffering. But they are so faithful to the Lord. They're fruitful, you know. They'll always live for Christ. And also, you'll have wonderful, godly, spiritual perspective. And you know what? Suffering people are endowed with spiritual discernment. You know, woe unto those who are the cause of suffering because they have failed to understand the very core of the gospel of Christ. You know, don't you ever become the cause of suffering for any person, mental suffering or any suffering. Stay away from that, causing, you know, don't ever. Just leave people alone. That's why I said as a pastor, every person has a right to come into this church, the house of God, with 100% freedom. And then every person has a right to worship the Lord with 100% freedom, and every person has a right with 100% freedom to whomever they want to co communicate and listen. Okay? This is very important to understand for us. Okay? So let us let not cause any suffering to any person. Very important. It means a lot to me to know that every church member feels very happy, very blessed to the, because they could enjoy coming into the church to worship Christ a lot. You know, I can never... Ask uh, Kampal uh, uh, or Sam Boy or, or uh, Ryan Boy to like me and say, Oh, Pathada, what a great man. He, he has his life, and I have my life, and behind the Lord, I just get good. Okay? I can't compel Josh to become my good friend. No. Josh is himself. So let him have his life here. I can't say, Hey, you be my good friend, Vinay, and I want you to text me and forget it. When you have your life, I have my life. I got uh, my work cut out for the Lord, you know, and you have your work cut out for the Lord. Let's serve the Lord with joy, isn't it? Very important that we become non-interfering in our church. Very, very important. Do not interfere because that could be suffering for somebody, you know. Be very sensitive because that we should not be the cause of any such suffering. Also, Luke 14, 27. Whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Look at it. Cannot be my disciple. It kills me when I read it. Lord, I am far from it, Lord. Luke 9, 23. And then he said to them all, if anyone decides to come after me, let him deny himself. Now, what are the things that you need to deny yourself? It may cause you suffering. The whole nature. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Cross stands for shame, rejection, false accusation, condemnation, mistreatments, cruelty. And there's a cross for every disciple who seeks to follow Jesus Christ as his master and Lord Jesus. You know, I want to tell you another thing. Here, this church is not birds of the same feather flock together. No. Here in this church, birds of different feathers flock together. That's what heaven is going to be. Birds of totally different feathers will flock together in heaven. Isn't it? Look, Revelation, you read. People of all tongues and all languages, all persuasions will be in heaven. This is church. You know, we have differences with each other. But we flock together because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't it? I'm a, I'm a part from this part of India. I don't look for another person. No. I can mingle with anybody going to all the world, Jesus said that. So the whole thing of this secular saying birds are the same feather, it's a pagan idea. A Christian idea is birds of different feathers will flock together. Okay? That's the way it is in life. May God help us to be matured. You know, those who go through suffering, they have a very mature way of seeing. You know, some people come to me and say, Pastor, this is an amazing church. I say, Christ is amazing. He loves 
You know, we say Jesus loves all the children of the world, right? Look at it. Yellow, brown, black, and blue, you see. Everything he loves, isn't it? This is church. And he loves people of all kinds. All, all differences of opinion, God loves. But he brings them to maturity. And how does he bring? Through suffering. Sometimes suffering helps a lot, you know. And cross is an important thing. Never let cross take away from your life. Suffering is part of the spiritual heritage of all God's children, you know, and uh, God's precious children. And it's the only road way to spiritual maturity, no other way. Hence, we belong to the family of sufferers for Christ. You know, my wife can minister to another person going through cancer, breast cancer or anything, thyroid cancer or anything. She is controlled, okay? So immediately anybody goes through that, she can immediately minister to them because she has gone through. And she can empathize with them. She will tell them, oh, these are the things I went through. This is what happened to my hair. This is what happened to... Okay? That's what it is. You know, you empathize people. It's not a bookish way you can relate to Christianity. Through suffering, you relate to family member. If one family member suffers, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it says, I think in verse 26, all members suffer. Beautiful chapter it is, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Romans 8, 17b, if indeed we suffer with him, then we'll also be glorified together. We'll reign with him. So 8, 18, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The only way believers can escape conflicts and suffering is to deny Christ and compromise their witness and to do so would be a sin. We will be misunderstood and persecuted even by those who are the closest to us. Yet as disciples of Christ, we must not allow this to affect our blessed Christian witness. We must suffer for Christ's sake and for the life of righteousness' sake and not for being difficult to live with. Never compromise your authentic Christian life. Let us pray and ask God never to be offensive Christians, you know, Jesus said that don't be offended at all. The oversensitive children of God will seek to find a way out of suffering because to them life is all about how they feel and how comfortable they are. That means they, they're, they're not ready to take the cross. Remember our Lord endured enormous verbal abuses with offensive criticism and downright condemnation. Do you seek to escape suffering? beloved in Christ, but a spiritual and maturing child of God will endure all kinds of sufferings as a result of his or her love for the Lord Jesus. I mingled with lots of people. Enormous suffering people. That's why I say this with the love. I want to quickly go through a small portion of uh, the, the sufferings. Verses uh, number one, James chapter one, verse two and three. James chapter one, Verse 2 and 3, James says that we should see suffering as a joyful opportunity to be tested and grow in patience. Important points. Come something like a couple of points, okay? Uh, is suffering as a joyful opportunity to be tested and to grow in patience, isn't it? Okay? And then in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, and then you go on to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14 to 18, uh, Apostle Peter says, that suffering is a blessing because it proves that our faith is genuine. Okay? Number three, number three is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. Paul tells Timothy that the power of God is what will enable him to suffer well for Christ. Okay? Paul trains his Timothy, his son, spiritual son. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3 and 4, Paul tells Thessalonian church that he had previously warned them that they should suffer for the sake of Christ and that they should be not be dismayed at what they are experiencing currently. Okay? And number five, Romans 8, 17 and 18, Paul told the Christians in Rome that they would in fact suffer if they belonged to God. Okay? If you belong to God, you will suffer. Acts chapter 14, verse 22, Paul encouraged Christians in various small towns to continue their faith by understanding that the entrance into the kingdom of God meant suffering and tribulation. No suffering equals no kingdom. And 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 
verse 19 through 13, Paul described the suffering that he had and his companions had experienced with words like sentenced to death, hunger, thirst, poorly dressed, buffeted, homeless, reviled, persecuted, slandered, scum of the world, and the refuse of all things. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Again, to the Corinthian church, Paul describes his suffering with words like afflicted, perplexed, persecuted, stuck down, carrying in their bodies the death of Jesus Christ. And then finally, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 24 to 28, just in case the church was still in place where they couldn't stomach the thought of suffering for Christ, Apostle Paul gets even more detailed when he says all those things, five times I served, was hands of Jews, lashes, etc., etc., which we read earlier, isn't it? Now, understand the importance of sharing in the sufferings of Christ. Here, there will not be any room for self-pity at all or any sense of ascetic or stoic attitude. You know, those who study philosophy, stoic, stoicism, you know. Oh, I'll bite my lips and suffer. No, no. God gives, I'll take it well. Job, God gave, God gave, take it. I'll let the Lord be the judge. But rather we rejoice even in our sufferings as Paul and Silas did at the Philippian jail. We'll stop it right here and pick up the last point, conformed to his death. Okay? That will be the last one that we'll be doing in the next Sunday. Sim number 493. On the Christian soldier marching
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for helping us to tiny bit understand what it means for you to take, suffer and take the cross. Lord God, drive within me and within us the deep lessons of the word of God. We pray for complete healing for Major General Surma as he goes on Tuesday for appendicitis, that the name of Jesus, power of Jesus, blood of Jesus, will anoint thy son and all the doctors, nurses, every instrument will be made well and whole. And we pray for Mr. Kuspa Grover to be strengthened, to be with Mrs. Uh, David, to be with her. And we pray, Lord, that will be with our beloved Danny and Matthew as they travel, that they'll have a safe journey and give them a blessed time and bring them back in your time. We pray, Master, for you to bless the Kola Manchini family, Lord, and also we pray for our dear uh, Divya and uh, with them as they travel back to New Jersey, as children will go safe. And continue to lead them, reveal thy will and plan and purpose for them. And we thank you, Lord, that will continue to sustain Sandhya, completely heal her in the name, in the blood of Christ, in the power of the risen Christ, from the sole of her feet to the crown of her head. Make her whole, Lord. We pray for our children. We thank you for Azariah's help. Continue to strengthen thy son. And we thank you, Lord, that will continue to be with others who need your touch. We thank you for the glorious testimony that we heard today of what you did, what you can continue to do. Lord, it's amazing what great things you are able to do. You love us all. Now send us, Lord, with your Emmanuel's presence, with your love, with your joy, with your peace with your faith and hope. Continue to lead us, guide us in the matters of decisions, in matters of counsel. Grant us, Lord. We await to hear from the University of St. Boy's Matter, Lord, so that your name is glorified. We thank you again, Lord, that will be with Kamala as she leaves on Wednesday to India, that thou will be with thy daughter. Grant her joining mercies and give her a blessed time with their loved ones. And we thank the Lord that will continue to lead and guide each and every one of us. Some of us do travel here and there. Grant us, Lord, Psalm 121 as a blessing. We follow thy feet. We pray thou will accept the tithes and offerings of thy children. We can never outgive you in any measure. All that we have is yours. Accept it. Utilize it for your glory and honor. Lead us, guide us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us both now and forever. Amen. May God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday. Thank you.